Welcome to tonight's presentation, Events of the Tribulation. And this is part three of four in our End Times series. And I'm very excited to bring this to you. Part one, we covered Bible prophecy. Uh, you can download that now at learnlogos.com. Part two, we talked about the rapture views, and that'll be coming soon. And then part three is what we'll be covering tonight. And then we've got one more in this series, What is the Millennial Kingdom? And this is going to be exciting because we're going to look at all the Old Testament prophecies that describe, as well as what we know about in the New Testament as well. And uh, this should be eye-opening for anyone who doesn't know much about the Millennial Kingdom. Now, the purpose of a webinar, just so you know, to set expectation, what is a webinar experience like for some of you who are new? Well, first and foremost, we're going to provide training for you personally for Logos Bible Software. Second, we're going to provide training so you can study the topic for yourself. Third, we're going to provide biblical insights related to the topic. And fourth, we're going to provide materials if you purchase the webinar so you can equip yourself and others. And uh, very excited about tonight's presentation. Uh, we're going to uh, show you some recommended but not required resources. We're going to establish the framework to study the events of the tribulation. We're going to show you how to study by creating the chronology of events. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Key topics to study and to understand the tribulation better. We'll talk about strategies for marking up the text. We'll look at understanding Revelation in light of the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Uh, we're going to talk about referencing time in the tribulation. A lot is mentioned in the tribulation about how long it is and so forth. So we'll take a look at that. And then we'll just give you a few ideas for additional terms to study. Now, this presentation is a little unique in that this one I'm going to include uh, almost 60 bonus slides with the purchase of the webinar. Let me go ahead and pull that up to show you what I mean. So what I've done is I've taught on the book Revelation before in my Sunday school. And uh, I took all those PowerPoint slides and kind of put them all together in one PowerPoint presentation. So you can see here all the links are there. And uh, there's room for you to insert images. I couldn't include images because they're copyrighted, but you'll be able to do that yourself. And uh, as you can see, it's quite detailed in almost 60 slides. Actually, I think it's 59. And you can see that we're going through verse by verse, going through in details. Uh, so this will be very, very helpful for you uh, if you're interested in teaching on this particular topic. And uh, here's a fun slide. I just thought I'd mention this one. <laughs> I was talking about the uh, the seventh seal and how uh, the fourth angel comes out with the bull and the sun scorches earth and man. And, uh, and so I was showing you the UV index. And to give you uh, an understanding of the significance of this judgment relative to when the sun is hot in the summer. And uh, so there's things like that that are in here that I think you'll find quite enjoyable. Uh, here's the picture of one of the largest pieces of hail ever found. And uh, this one was after a thunderstorm. And uh, to give you a picture of this, okay, it's eight inches in diameter and it weighs almost two pounds, okay? But we know from the tribulation, hail's going to fall. That's going to be 100 pounds. So you can imagine... Uh, how fast this is going to fall and how powerful and deadly it's going to be. In fact, uh, the um, government says large hailstones can fall at speeds faster than 100 miles per hour. So you can imagine uh, this type of judgment. So some things are in there that I think you'll find quite interesting. But again, very detailed. And uh, so hopefully you'll enjoy that as a bonus. In addition to the 60 slides, we'll also include the personal book. So let me go ahead and open up that real quick. So that's included here. And as you can see, all the things that we're going to mention in the webinar, the various books, the links, all those details are right here. For example, I've got almost 26 key topics for you to study uh, regarding the tribulation. All those are linked up to the passage guide and so forth. So you can see this is quite a detailed outline, making it easier for you to follow the training and, uh, and continue on studying for yourself. So that'll be very good. And then the other thing... Uh, that's included in this particular webinar is a giant document uh, walking you through verse by verse essentially and identifying the major and minor sections with some descriptions where appropriate. 
So this particular resource takes you all the way through the book of Revelation. And I'll be providing it as a docx format so that you can edit it yourself, add your own notes, and then you can convert that to a personal book. And then this will be fully searchable in the Logos Bible software program. So if you ever study a particular verse in Revelation, this resource will come up. And uh, this is just one of the many ways in which LearnLogos.com tries to help you study the books of the Bible better. So I think you'll enjoy those resources immensely. Okay, let's return to the PowerPoint. Let me go ahead and, and get that going. A couple uh, quick uh, reminders. Uh, we're trying to get the webinars downloaded within seven days to you. We're doing a lot more editing to make them a better product, so I appreciate your patience with that. And uh, the webinars are going to be released for $4.99. It's a 50% off for a uh, normal $9.99 price. And then over at the right, we've got the main training DVDs. We still have Logos 4 available, 300 videos, about 17 hours of training. And, of course, we have the Logos 5 training videos, 500-plus videos, 21 hours comprehensive training, uh, affordable, and we cover everything from features. We show you how to connect those features to tasks, how to connect those tasks to a study methodology. We teach you how to study log with Logos, and uh, we also show over 282 books. Some of those are included in your Logos library. Some of those you can get from Logos, and so this comprehensive training is the best way for you to learn Logos to the full extent, to take you beyond just entering passage and click go. Uh, go, go ahead to visit, uh, well, go and visit learnlogos.com forward slash buy now, and you can take advantage of those specials. Releasing soon will be the uh, Rapture Views, Fundamentals of the Faith, and How to Study Parables. We've got those three webinars in the queue. We're finishing the edits on those, and you'll be emailed when those become available. So hang in there for a little bit longer. And then lastly, we've got next week's webinar. And now this is part two. We've already done part one, what does God say about money? This will be part two about giving. Some of the questions we're going to address here is to tithe or not to tithe. There is a lot of misunderstanding on that particular topic. We're going to look at the new principles as well as Old Testament principles on giving and much, much more. If you've always wondered, you know, what does God want me to do with my money? That's part one. This will be sort of connected to that. What does God want you to do with your money? But in respects to the church and giving and charity, etc. So uh, if you want to know more about this topic, come join us. We're excited to be able to present that topic and bring about the conclusion to part two of this series. Okay, a couple little disclaimer warnings, <laughs> just as a reminder. The tribulation is a very controversial topic. Uh, there are people out there uh, who will disagree with what will be shared tonight. And uh, something to remind ourselves on a topic like this is that eschatology is not worth dividing over unless, of course, it attacks the gospel, attacks Christ, or undermines the word of God. We can be among brothers and sisters in Christ and have our disagreements about the future, uh, but if it undermines or changes the gospel of Christ or the, or the Word of God, then we have some issues. Uh, always remember that the various views of Revelation, uh, of the tribulation, is a weighted argument. We're looking at the future not yet fully revealed. Thus, each view has areas that are difficult to be very precise. Uh, there's also, of course, way more details than we have the time to present. There's historical, grammatical, theological, so much more information uh, that goes into a presentation like this. And so we have to remember that we are limited in our time. And dates are precise in the Bible, but sometimes our reckoning of the historical dates sometimes can be imprecise. So we've got to be careful there. And just remember, watch your rules of interpretation. Be consistent and be contextual. Remember, context is king. All right, so let's go back to our outline and get ourselves ready here. And let's get started with some recommended but not required resources. Let me go ahead now and show you in Logos how you can discover very quickly all the commentaries you have for Revelation. And this is really important to do for creating collections based around specific books of the Bible. So I'm gonna go to, let's go to the top and choose Tools from the menu. Next, locate collections in the menu and click it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up mine since I've already done it. But the what I would do is label it as commentaries colon space revelation. And this is a good pattern uh, to use. So that way you know it's commentaries and you know it's revelation. So you can do Matthew, Mark, Luke, etc. 
Now the rule is very important that you follow it exactly. We have subject, colon, quote, then we have Bible, period, space, n dot, t dot, no space, minus, minus. So there's two minuses there, kind of hard to see, but two minuses, and then the name of the book, Revelation, all in quotes. What's really neat about this particular rule is it will bring in some monographs, okay? Uh, because sometimes books are commentaries in nature, but they're not cataloged as a Bible commentary. And you want to make sure that those do appear in your list. Uh, because, for example, here's uh, uh, Clarence Larkin. He deals with the book Revelation, and it, it would be very helpful and supplement your commentary work, but it's not truly a commentary in the fullest sense. So doing this particular rule is going to be really nice because it's just going to bring everything related to the book of Revelation. So for those of you who want to go deeper into, let's say, textual criticism, looking at the original manuscripts, uh, the ICC commentary includes some of those fragments. You can see why the translators uh, use certain Greek words and so forth in the translation. And then you can see if that affects the ultimate theology, which it won't, but nevertheless, it's still a very exciting tool to use. All right, so that is how you would create a collection, and then we would simply search that collection. Oh, by the way, when you're finished, just click New. That's kind of a, a habit I've gotten myself into is to click New, and then go ahead and close the collection. Now let's just do a simple search against this to show you the power of uh, searching a collection. So I'm going to go to the search window, click on the search icon at the top. And uh, I'm going to choose basic. And then next I'm going to change from entire library. And I'm going to type in the word revelation. Now you'll notice right away that my commentaries for revelation appear. So there's my collection. I'm going to choose that. Now there's a couple ways in which we can search a collection. We can search a collection for a heading. We could search a collection for a particular word or phrase. We could search the collection for a passage. So uh, let's, uh, or you know, anything along those lines. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in, uh, let's type in uh, a particular event in the tribulation. Let's type in seals, okay? Seal judgment. And I'm going to just go ahead and search that. And so right away, we've got all the places where seal and judgments close proximity are found. Now, this is a great way to search quickly, but as you can see, we got way too many hits. So something we could do is we could put this in large text. Now, large text is an important tool that you need to learn or an important keyword to use in your searches because it allows you to search the chapter headings, the paragraph titles, which means if you get a hit there, the text that follows is all related to that. So that's a much better hit than just a passing reference to whatever you're searching. So I'm going to type in a large text, and I'm just going to type in seal judgments and put that in quotes. Anytime I have a phrase, I'm going to put it in quotes. Now, you can see my search results are greatly limited. I just have one search result outlined for the seven seal judgments. So if I click on that, I get, I get taken right to a particular book, Exegetical Study on the book of Revelation, and here they are, the seven sealed judgments listed out for us in an easy to read table. So when you're studying, having a collection that strictly comprises of Revelation commentaries will allow you to search just those resources. And by searching just the commentaries, that's going to make your life a whole lot easier. You're going to get fewer search results and everything will be appropriate because it's coming from the Revelation commentary. So very important technique when you're studying the topic of the tribulation. All right, so let's move to the next thing. And this is really important to mention. There are, you know, several views on book of Revelation. As we mentioned earlier, there's the Preterist view, which talks about the revelation being fulfilled in the past at AD 70. Then there's the idealist with the symbolism, the allegorical, transcendent truth for every generation. And then there's dispensational, which is chronological by nature yet to be fulfilled. I do need to mention here that even among the dispensational views, there is two views when it talks about chronology. Some see revelation, that is the seals, trumpets, and bowls, all kind of happening together simultaneously. So you can't think of Roman, uh, Revelation 4 through the rest of the book uh, happening one after the other after the other successive, but instead it's all happening over the seven years. 
Uh, and, and there's some arguments for that. In fact, if you have, I'm going to go ahead and click on this link that I've provided. If you have uh, Norm Geisler's Systematic Theology, Volume 4, he'll go into the simultaneous view, the pros and cons, and why people hold to that view. And then he'll go into the sequential view. I'm partial to the sequential view. I see the book happening more sequentially all the way through. But wherever you stand, this will help you understand the various views and why. Okay, great. We're now ready to move to the next section, number four, and that is establishing the framework. This is absolutely critical when you're dealing with the tribulation. There's just too much information. The book is too long and too detailed for you to just kind of, you know, jump in there. You need to have a strategy. So the first thing I would do and, and is open up the passage guide. So we would go to guides and then we would go to passage guides. And then what I would do is I would put in revelation for the Bible verse passage. Don't put in a specific chapter, just put in the word revelation. Now, the first step that I like to do in establishing the framework is getting an outline. And with the new 5.1, Logos is doing a wonderful job of tagging all your books and noting where the outlines are. So as, as uh, days and months pass, there's going to be more and more resources that are going to show up here in the outline section. Okay, so you want to run the passage guide. You want to put in the full book revelation. Uh, you could put in 1 through 22 if you wanted to, but I just put in just the book name. And then I would expand the outline section only. And then what I would begin to do is review all the outlines that are there. Now, why are we doing this? Well, first, looking at outlines is a great way to start a study because you can begin to see how people have organized the book, how they've broken the passages, where they see the various sections. This way, when you begin to study the events of the tribulation, you can study it one section at a time. You won't be overwhelmed because you'll be looking at small pieces. And then when you finish a section, you can then see how it's related to the rest of the book, what came before, what comes after. Now, if you're wondering why all my verses are highlighted, let me show you why. This is a very useful feature normally, but when you do something like what I'm doing, running a whole passage guide, it can be a little annoying. Let me show you. I'm going to click on the three circles under visual filters, and uh, there's this little option here, links to open panels. If I uncheck that, all the highlighting goes away. Now, this is really useful when you have your Bibles open and you're at a particular passage. Let me demonstrate. So right now, I have it all checked. And the reason, uh, let me refresh that, because sometimes when you change it, uh, Logos needs to refresh it. There we go. All right, now these links to open panels are linked to the one other open panel, my passage guide. So I'm going to close down the passage guide. The links have gone away. Now I'm going to open up my Bible, and I'm going to go to Revelation, uh, let's say, 4.1. Now by moving to Revelation 4.1, You'll notice that all the highlights went away and only those related to 4.1 appear. This is really strategic because when you're looking at a lot of information, but you're studying a particular verse, you want to see those passages that you're studying highlighted. And that's the advantage of using links to open panels. But the reason all of them showed up at first with the passage guide or even when I opened up the Bible is because all we had was revelation, which Logos is interpreting, interpreting chapters 1 all the way through 22. Okay, so with that said now, this is an important strategy. Open up your passage guide, run the whole book, and begin to examine the various outlines. And then you determine your sections to study. Very, very important. Another place to go, besides the outlines and various books and resources, is leveraging your maps and your charts. Now, many maps and charts are found in books like this, Nelson's Complete Book of Bible Maps and Charts. Now, if we scroll down, in fact, let me close my chart here to make a little more room. If you scroll down, you can see that we have Revelation at a glance. And so we can see the chapters and the various divisions and the titles to go with that. And then below, we have a detailed outline. So books like maps and charts are going to be very helpful. Let's take this one step further and do some searches and see if we can find some other images. Uh, because sometimes 